Hi everybody. I'm so glad we get to be here today. This is one of those videos that I have no idea what it looks like because I am once again out by my pond, uh, just having a moment with the Lord and wanted to share that with you. So I hope it's okay because I can't see a thing. Um, hopefully you can see my fence behind me. Um, <laughs> it's a geeky, nerdy uh, fence. But uh, here where my pond is, I have, it's in a corner, so it goes like this. And on both walls, I just have bright, crazy, mismatched things hanging on the fence so that when I come out here and sit, not only am I hearing the pond, but I'm also visualizing such beauty and color, and it reminds me of who God is to me. So I'm just going to share that with you today, and uh, we'll see what you think. Okay, we have a tremendous amount of scriptures that we're going to try to fly by. Um, we cannot go deep on all of these scriptures. So I'm going to give you the premise, and then it's really important today that you go to uh, Jot and Tittle on Facebook and see the work. Um, today you will actually be working really hard to dig deeper. There's so much in these verses we're going to cover. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for this beautiful day. Not too cold, not too hot, just perfect day. And so, Lord, I thank you that we get to come together and share your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if you can hear, but a frog in the pond has decided to, to croak for us as we were praying. So I hope you get to hear them a little bit more off and on. They get pretty active when I come out here. All right, let's review of why it is that we are doing this study. This is a five day a week um, a devotional that will last one year. We started June 1st and we will end next May. So we covet your prayers and, and we love that you would possibly accept the invitation to come and study the Bible with us every day because I know that my daughter and I, my daughter-in-law and I are having the time of our life doing this. Um, today, we are going to try to get all of this in, but I'm hoping, Lord willing, and we figure out how to do it, there will be a special video today in, it, in conjunction with this one. All right. Well, what we are studying, we are entitling it, I Am. And the reason that is entitled that is because my daughter and I came to this just almost like an epiphany. We came to this understanding that really, a lot of people, including my daughter-in-law and I, struggle with our identity of who we are and why we are. And so we have taken it upon ourselves that that's what the Lord is asking us to do. So every day we will have an I am statement. And what that I am statement reflects is I am who he says I am. And so we're going to see, we're going to travel through the word together, and we're going to find every single jot and tittle and nugget that we can that we can find to share with us of what God says we are so that we can fall on that and we can we can rest ourselves on that and really even just to decide whether or not we're going to accept that as our identity okay so today's I am is um, it is I am a singer I was going to entitle it um, that I am a singer because I have joy. But you know, I found so many uh, singing verses in the scripture that I began to realize there are lots of different reasons that we sing. Um, so we're gonna try to look and see that and we'll cover that I sing for joy later, okay? So we're gonna make this a little bit different. All right, well, first of all, let's, let's kind of start with some verses. We're gonna spend a lot of time in Psalms and then we're gonna flip over to Zephaniah, and we're going to take time to find that book. It's, it's in there. It's a little teeny, and it's kind of in there, and it gets lost sometimes. And then we're going to go to Revelation. So let's get started right away. And we are going to start with, let's start with, um, let's start with Psalms 96, okay? So take a minute, and Psalms is pretty much the very middle of your Bible. So if you open your Bible to the middle, to the middle you will be in Psalms and then just flip pages back and forth just remember that the that the um, 
The Psalms are short, so don't, don't miss them as they go by. So we are going to be on Psalms 96. And we're just going to, we're just going to start doing these, just getting some of the verses out there um, before we talk about that, each one. Psalms 96, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his, salva of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I'm glad that we started there because it puts our feet on really solid ground. David is helping us understand what is expected of us. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Must be something in the air. We are really landing our feet on a good place. Because remember, Jesus is not yet in Psalms. But David has been identified later to be the first Christ. He represents the Davidic line of that the Messiah came through. So we know a lot about David because God just kind of opened up his diary and let us all read it. So in this portion of scripture, we're going to see a different kind of singing. Now I'm going to give a little cheat. Look just right up at 95 and verses 1 through 5. You're going to see there, there's a ton of singing for joy. Okay, that's why I was going to do it, singing for joy, because there's tons of them. But that's a different kind of singing when you drop down to 96. One of the things that stands out to me in this verse is new song. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to do something crazy. And I am going to ask you to search and find the definition of that word new. Okay, because that changes everything, that one word. It's not an old song, probably not an already sung song. But look at who else is called to sing. It's not just us. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his tidings day after day. Tell of his glory, his wonderful deeds. For great is the Lord. And so he deserves so much of our, 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 our praise to him. I love to sing. It's something I've always enjoyed. Something I grew up with. Um, my dad, oh my goodness, he could not sing at all. It was just kind of me when my dad tried to sing. Um, but my dad loved to go to church. And he loved to sing the songs. My mom was an amazing piano player. And she only played by ear. She has no idea how she learned. She grew up very poor. She knows she never had a piano. But somehow she sat at that piano and was able to just play. And so I grew up my whole life on Saturday morning. That is the typical way I woke up with my mother playing the piano. And I would make my way down the stairs. And very often I would come and sit next to her on the piano bench. And I remember actually from a very early age starting this habit and we would sing and I always wanted her to sing one more, one more, one more. So I grew up with this amazing Saturday worship praise session with my mother and my creator. And so from that, I think I really came to love the idea of singing, of making music before God. Now, I will tell you, I sang for years. Um, my voice was reasonable. I studied in college for uh, a little bit in singing. And I used to, to sing at various places, mostly on worship teams, sometimes special things here and there. Um, but one of the times that I was sick and they had to put something down my throat, it kind of wrecked a little bit of my vocal cords and how they sound. So now and today, I sound very gutturally. Um, you hear it kind of gravelly and it's, it's very low. Um, so I don't sound at all nice anymore, but singing has never changed for me. I think my mother taught me that singing is not what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your mouth. It's produced in you through the Holy Spirit and God is writing the songs. 
and we are singing them. We are singing the melody that he sings inside of us. So once the Lord kind of taught me this amazing definition of, of singing, I began to enjoy so much more because now I know the song isn't dependent on whether or not I have enough air. It's just enough spirit that I need to sing. Let's look at a couple others. Um, in your homework today, you're going to go back and you're going to read 96. And I want you to pull a lot of data from that. Let's, let's try to cover a couple more. I know we're getting, we're getting up there. All right, let's do Psalms. Let's do Psalms 104. Just flip over a couple, just a couple pages. Let's look at 104.3. Uh, 104.33, sorry. I sometimes have problems with numbers. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Those two sentences don't look like they should be in the same paragraph. He's talking about God's glory. He's talking about his wonders. It's talking about literally how even mountains and the earth tremble at him. And then it goes right into, so worship him. So we're seeing here, God is planting a whole new idea of not just singing. That we are, we are literally the chorus for the earth. You know, we've got accompanying singers with us. This is not a misplaced sentence and a misplaced paragraph. They do go together. They go together wonderfully. Okay. Now let's look at uh, verse one, uh, chapter 105. And let's read. We're just going to read. We have so much to cover. All right. Let's just read verse 2. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all his wonders. Glory in his name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Do we see all of these words in here that really aren't saying much about a melody, but it's saying a whole lot about singing, a whole lot about singing. Let's hit, let, let's hit another one. We're going to, we're going to kind of switch bases here. And this time I want you, yeah, let's go back. Let's go where we're beginning to see that God is doing some kind of different singing and different composing for us, okay? I think that's a nice illustration that he is the composer and we perform it for him. So let's look real quick at uh, Psalms 89. 89.1, I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever. To all generations I will make known thy faithfulness with thy mouth. Hmm. When you, when you begin to study this today and you begin to take every word for what it means, I just pray that you just have this overwhelming encounter with God that, that blows your socks off. All right, let's go to 57. Let's pull that up. Just a couple pages more. I'm sorry, 59. Not 57, 59. And let's read it. Verse 16. But as for me, I shall sing of thy strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of thy loving kindness in the morning. For thou hast been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my dis distress. O oh, my strength. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to thee. For God is my stronghold, the God who shows me loving kindness. Are you seeing a pattern here yet? I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to describe how healing these portions of scripture are for me. Knowing that God gives us every reason, no matter what the circumstances are in life, no matter if anybody else is singing with you, no matter if the, if the singing is just in your heart, in your spirit, God always has this environment where singing is expected and needed. You see, it's part of our identity in the fact that God calls us to do this. He longs, he literally longs 
to hear us sing to him. And so knowing that, knowing that that is so pleasing to him, to engage in that kind of relationship with him is astounding. The only thing that I can um, compare it to is, I, you know, I've shared with you before, I have two of my grandbabies living here um, while my son is trying to help take care of me until I kind of recover a little bit more than I, I have. Um, and he will come up in my lap, actually both of them, but they only like to do it one at a time. And they'll come and they'll crawl in my lap and I will make up songs. We'll make up any kind of songs. And the other day my daughter-in-law was eavesdropping um, and she said, Mama, are those even real songs? And I laughed and a couple of them were things that my mom had sung to me. So I guess I just assumed that they were real songs. <laughs> Lo and behold, I don't think they were songs. I think they were things that my mother made up, just like I was making up songs for my grandchildren. Um, when my kids were younger, before we had so many, um, <laughs> we did this crazy exercise every morning. And we had a, a reasonable car ride to get to where they needed to go for school. Um, we had taken a little bit of a break at public school and went to a Christian school for two years. And it was so funny because it was such a long drive. We had to do something every morning. It was early, it was a long drive, otherwise my kids would have fallen asleep in the car. So every single day we would make up the verse to um, the song that, that we sang every day. And it was so funny because they would come up with the funniest things. It was a basic, it's a great day, it's a great day, it's a great day in the Lord. And then the kids would sing something back that would fit in that. Sometimes it was specific, like, because I'm going to have a test and I need you to help me remember. It was just silly things that we would sing back. But every day that they went to school, that was part of our ritual. And I didn't realize how intentional that ritual was. But their singing and my singing to each other was so, it's so profound in my memory. It's like in the forefront, like I can't forget it. And my kids tell stories about it. They laugh about it. And now that we have grandkids and we're singing silly songs, I recognize how generational this has been. My mom didn't have a mom who sang over her. My mother's mother died when she was a baby. And then her stepmother died when she was not quite a teenager. So my mom has never had a mother that sang over her. So it started with my mom, but this generational of singing has become so fun. I want you to look at a couple more verses with me now that you kind of maybe have an idea of what I'm looking at here. Let's go to Psalms 40, just a couple pages back. Chapter 40, verse three. Oh, I love this one. These next two are just wonder in my mind. Okay, we're going to read chapter 40, and we are going to read verse 3. Yeah. And he, this is literally a capital H, so that means it's literally talking about the coming Messiah. David had no idea who Jesus was going to be, but he knew there was going to be a Messiah. So this capital H is talking about deity. God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And David writes, and he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. You know, it's funny, uh, that word trust on the last phrase, it literally means to find security. So this verse is saying not only are we called to sing not only are we called to, to, to present ourselves before him, but he promises us he's going to give us songs. He is going to give us songs. This is the second time that we've seen um, this idea of a new song. Okay, This is the second time we've seen that descriptive word new. So it's really important that you go and you find out what that word means. All right, now we're going to turn the pages back real quick to Psalms 42. And once again, we see this new, this new concept of God's, of his song, our song coming together. Psalms chapter 
42, and we're going to look at verse 8. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. Now, I, I want you to hear, you know what, let me just read it one more time. I want you to hear this. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. You see, God uses the songs that he gives us to create a storyline, to create a, a song that becomes our life. When I think that God has sung over us in order for us to know him and to feel him close, these passages show that in the day, in the night, any time, in the circumstances, in anything, this mutual singing over each other is such an intended part of our relationship, of our identity in this relationship that we have with God Almighty. It goes so beyond just using our mouth. It, it goes so beyond. It's our life that is singing. Our life is singing what God composes in us. People get to hear by seeing it sung out in our life. I'm going to ask my girls today. I don't know if they'll agree. <laughs> I'm going to ask my girls if they would just make a little singing video of my mom's favorite song. I used to sing it to her. She wrote it in her stuff that she wanted me to sing it at her funeral. She's nuts. But I recognize that this song is her life song. It's a song that she sang from her heart, not from somebody who wrote the song, but this was a song that my mom made into a living, breathing melody. And so many people were exposed to her life story. Now, we're just gonna read one more and the other ones I'm gonna give you from, for homework. Um, there's a little teeny book called Zephaniah. It's still in the Old Testament. It's super hard to find, okay? If you find Jonah, Okay, it's just a couple, it's just a few more books over. It's right after Habakkuk, which is probably a, a, another one that you haven't heard much. But Zephaniah is just a page over from Habakkuk, and we are going to look at Zephaniah 3.17. And this is, quotes. Uh, this is a word coming from God to his people. And so this is a direct quote. This is a direct conversation. So I, I'm going to read this to you, and I just want you to just listen for a minute. We're going to start at verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst. A victorious war, warrior, excuse me. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Can you picture that? Can you picture God saying to them, to his people, come on, come a little closer because I want to sing with you. I want to sing over you. I want you to understand my beauty for you. And it's going to come out in the way I sing to you. So for God to want to do that and call his, his people, Israel, to say, this is my promise to you. This is my prophecy to you. You come back in a, to a relationship with me, and I'm going to pour beautiful songs over you. Now, I have uh, three references in Revelation, and the reason that I wanted to put those in there is because from the beginning of creation to the end, when we get to go spend eternity with God, the song of him is perpetual. In these three references that you'll that you'll get in your homework, they are they are literally taking place in heaven. In heaven, while we're in heaven, and the singing, and the melody, 
and the music, we get to stand before God for all eternity and sing with him, sing for him, and listen to him sing over us for all eternity. So when we look at these verses and we see that this is such a lifelong, this is such a perpetual, progressive, this is such an important part of our identity while we live on this earth and while we live in heaven with him, that has to tell us how important this is. This is critical. This is critical to our relationship with him. Oh, I had so many things I wanted to share with you. Um, luckily, I jotted them down in your homework, so I pray that you will do them. Please plan on spending extra time uh, doing the work. Don't Try not to do it all in one day unless you have that big block of time, but don't skip any of the Psalms or any of the verses. Okay, I, I don't know why I'm so tender today, but uh, just knowing that sweet spirit. I kind of wished that I would have paid attention to see if any of the birds were singing because uh, they might have joined us today in singing over God. I will see you guys tomorrow.